Um, my first question would be, what treatment options are available for infants with obstructive sleep uh, apnea? So there is a considerable variation in practice when treating obstructive sleep apnea in infants less than 12 months of age. It can go all the way from non-surgical interventions like observing the infant or giving supplemental oxygen, high flow nasal cannula, or giving some medications like intranasal steroids or even doing anti-GERD treatments with PPIs. At the other end of the spectrum, we have infants who need surgical interventions, and those can include adenoidectomy, tonsillectomy, supraglottoplasty, and in certain extreme cases, we can even do tracheostomy, which would entail making a hole in the trachea of the infant so that the infant can be ventilated. Now, what are the current risk factors we know of for, for infants with um obstructive sleep apnea? So, so far, most of the studies had focused on looking at older children with obstructive sleep apnea and then assessing their risk factors. What we know is that certain demographic factors like African-American race, low socioeconomic status, or having a history of prematurity, bronchopulmonary dysplasia, or even craniofacial anomalies, for instance, kids with trisomy 21, they are most at risk for sleep apnea. Our study focused on looking at the infant population, and to our knowledge, this hasn't really been studied quite a lot. But it is important because infants, as we know, are more susceptible to sleep apnea given their anatomy. They have a smaller maxilla, they have a smaller mandible, and to begin with, they have immaturity in their breathing pattern as they transition from the womb into the outer world. So we looked at the infant population and tried to look at what the risk factors would be. And more for the most part, we saw that yes, there was a general, there was general like general liability, I'm sorry, of uh, the risk factors that we know in older children. But some of the risk factors which have been said in older children were not seen in this group. So what we do know now is that infants they do have, if the infant has a history of craniofacial anomaly, if the infant has a history of bronchopulmonary dysplasia, then these would be some of the known risk factors. But what we saw in our study was some very interesting findings where if you have a history of feeding dysfunction and you're not able to swallow, uh, then in those cases, those infants were at high risk for having sleep apnea. All right. Now, um, how, do, how do some of the symptoms kind of present differently in different infants? So in infants, it is very hard to see any symptom for sleep apnea because when you're looking at an adult or you're looking at an older child, most of them will present with some behavior changes. They would be more sleepy and they would have... Uh, they would show either some changes in hyperactivity behavior, but in infants, that's really hard to say because they are sleeping most of the time. Mm. When we looked at the infant population within our study, we saw that the parents reported snoring in infants even without sleep apnea. We also saw that the presenting symptoms were very similar, whether you have sleep apnea or not. Most of the infants who came to our clinic with sleep-related concerns almost all of them had similar features. So that made it, uh, and that was actually what prompted our study because we knew that there really, uh, if an infant is snorting, is having some gasping and is ha have showing symptoms where they are hungry for breath, when they are sleeping, now those really aren't as sensitive markers for sleep apnea. If uh, what we decided and what we concluded from our study was if a, in, an infant presents with these symptoms, then definitely they warrant more investigation to see if they have sleep apnea or not. And at that time, we can assess for these other comorbidities that we found. If an infant has those symptoms and the comorbidities, then it makes sense for the clinician to refer the patient for further testing for sleep apnea. 